A really powerful feature in Affinity Photo that I love is called macros. And these more or less take the space that Photoshop Actions did or do. And you can think of them in a similar fashion if you're familiar with those. They're more or less useful for people who edit a lot of photography and want to speed up their process. So you can record the exact edits you make on an image and play them back on future images that you edit. And you can also share these, of course. So it's powerful in that regard. So by default, the UI for the macros isn't shown, but we can show it by going to View Studio and clicking Macro. And accompanying this panel, we'll want to pull out the library panel as well. I'm going to fixate this to the left. And the library has preset macros already for us to use. And you can see some here that are just two-step processes to create an image that's black and white, or flips it horizontally, flips it vertically, etc. So we'll get into the library in a moment, but I'm going to start with the macro side. Here we have a basic uh, recording icon, which you would click to start your process of just capturing what it is you're doing to the image step by step. Here you can stop that recording when you're finished, and then here you can apply that effect or that macro to the future images you prefer to use, and you'll recreate the same effect over and over and over. Um, on the right here, we can reset our macro if we're not satisfied with it. We can also add it to our library, which ends up over here. And then we can, of course, export and import those once we have them preset. So to start here, I have an image I took recently that is during the winter months where I'm located. And it's kind of a dull but dreary photo, but I want to at least liven it up a bit. Maybe go ahead and make it a full edit. So let's start by just editing this the way we like. But before I do that, I want to record the process. So I'll hit this record button first. Great, so now I can go ahead and edit things. So to start, I'm going to add a layer adjustment, which will begin with levels. Just add in some of the blacks and the whites. Just kind of enhance the contrast of the image here. And just like from that menu, we can do the same from this menu in our layers panel. It's adjustments layer. And I'm going to add an HSL filter and increase the saturation a bit to bring out some of the color in the ground. So you can see some of the grass is a little green still. Great. And the same is true for, say, curves. I really like adding curves to most photos I edit. And it's usually just a very subtle S-curve. So from here, we can go ahead and add maybe a live filter effect. So I can go ahead and you'll notice it's prompting me to select the layer or select all the layers. Since this is a macro, it's recording the process. So it's like asking what I should do. So in this case, I just want to select this background layer. So I'll hit select. It'll go ahead and do that and record that state. And you can do the same thing here. Go back to the live filter layer. I think I'm going to add a vignette filter. And this will be applied just over top of it. You can adjust this exposure to be dark or light. I think I'm going to add it to be pretty dark and scale it back some. So increase the scale so just so it's around the outer edges. And you can adjust the shape too. Since our shape is kind of a, a rectangle, I might make it more of an oval. Scale it back a little bit more. Okay, so I think I'm satisfied with that, and we'll just call that done. To finish out the macro, we can stop recording by hitting this button up at the top left, and it should be all ready to go. The neat thing about a macro is you let the user more or less prompt the user to adjust things as they go, as opposed to just doing this um, as one strict process. So to adjust things as they go, you can toggle the effect by clicking the gear icon right here. And then just like I did there, uh, making the eye icon present or active, and this will prompt you to rename it if you want to. I'm just going to use the defaults right here, but you can also change the name if you would like. I'll leave the gamma alone, but the user can select the black and white levels, so they'll be prompted to do so. And the same is true for the adjustment filters. You can do a ton here. If you really want to, I think I'm going to leave that alone just to make this simple. 
and less user involved. And the vignette, I think it will allow the user to edit because all photos are pretty different in terms of you know what you need to adjust. So let's go ahead and set, have a setting for each of those. And then we'll call that good. So right now this is this is all ready to go. We can add it to our library. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And we can add it to our default category, which is there by default, of course. So let's just give this a name of uh, in yet landscape and you'll see it's added here there's nine steps involved so a quick thing about the library panel is you can export all the macros at once you can rename certain categories you can move things up and down it's kind of endless of what you can do this one's named default by default but you can add more if you'd like Back in the macro panel, we have our preset. It's all ready to go. We can also apply the same thing here, which we just did twice. So let me revert our image completely, and I'll give you the full spectrum of how this really works. So I'll delete these adjustment layers, and we're back to our original one. So let's go from the macro panel, and you can hit play. And you'll see it does everything here, and then it gives us all these settings to adjust in the same time. So we can adjust the black in the photo, increase the whites or decrease the whites, exposure. So think of it as its own little customizable widget that you can apply with your own macros as you make these and scale these for your own photos. Already we have our macro set up, our image is edited, and it's customized to what we chose the parameters. Uh, to be in these settings that we allowed the user to edit. So say you want to export this and share it with other people, you can do so. You can add it to the library or export this individual macro. You could just call it um, vignette, vignette macro and export that. And if you were to import that, you certainly could. It's saved as an AF my macro file. So you just open it just like so. We already have it here, so it's not gonna affect anything. But that would be how you would work with macros. So you can add as many of these to you want as you want to your library. You can create a new category, of course. So the, by default, it's called macros. And we can maybe rename this to maybe portraits or some sort of specific editing style you're going for. And you can just group things accordingly. So if you want to right click on this, it'll apply it again to the image. Unfortunately, you can't quite move that down, I don't think. So let me see if I can. You can move the whole category down, but you cannot move the individual macro down. So that's something to take into account unless you drag and drop here. Let's try that. Okay, so you can drag and drop the macros to move them up and down. So that's a quick overview of macros. They're very powerful. You can use them to create some really stunning photography that is very automated. So if you have a large batch of photos, you can save some time and heartache and a headache uh, in making those edits as you go. For sure, check those out. And if you have your own macros to share, you can export them and share them with the community below in the comments. So I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with.